Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is is risen risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. By his suffering and death, our Lord has paid for our sins. And by his rising has destroyed the power of death. As a called and ordained servant of our risen and triumphant Lord Jesus Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. From Isaiah 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He shall swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. 
It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand.
Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, boys and girls. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today is a very special day, and it's a joy-filled day. That's why we have our Alleluia shakers, so that we can celebrate any time we hear the word Alleluia. So boys and girls, let's practice. When you hear this special word, I want you to shake, shake, shake your egg. Are you ready? Alleluia. Shake, shake, shake. Stop. Alleluia. Stop. Very good. Now, we've been learning the past few weeks about Jesus' great, big love for us. And boys and girls, I want you to know that Jesus' love is so big that we can't keep it in a box. It would just bubble over. We can't keep Jesus' great, big love for us in a bag because it would just bubble over. And we definitely can't keep his love in a jar because it can't bub- it would just bubble over. Alleluia. Praise Jesus for his great big love. Now we also learned today that we can't keep Jesus love in a grave. Let's listen to that story. About 2000 years ago, Jesus showed us his great big love for us by dying on a cross to take away our sins. Now this was a sad day. But we call it Good Friday because it was good for us. Jesus took away all of our sins when he died on the cross. And after Jesus died on the cross, they took his body 
and they laid it in a tomb, in a grave. And they put a big stone in front of that tomb so that no one could get into the tomb and no one could come out. On Sunday morning, some women were coming to the tomb and they were coming to put some spices on Jesus' body. And as they were on their way, they were wondering, how are we gonna get the stone out of the way? But as they got closer, do you know what they saw? The stone was rolled away. And then they saw an angel. And the angel told them, do not be afraid. You're looking for Jesus. Jesus is not here. He is risen. Alleluia. Boys and girls, Jesus' love is so big that we can't keep it in a grave either because Jesus would rise again. Alleluia. Jesus is alive. So now we keep our Jesus' love in our heart and we share it with all those around us because when Jesus' love is in our heart, it can just bubble over and we can tell others that Jesus is alive. Alleluia. Now today, when you go, I would like you to get a special gift, a book from one of the acolytes or from Pastor Roland, and then keep your Alleluia shakers with you so that you can continue to celebrate with our Alleluias throughout the service. But please put them back in the baskets at the back of church so that we can celebrate throughout the Easter season. Boys and girls, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please pray with me. Dear Jesus, you are our risen King. Thank you for your love. May we shine Easter joy today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Easter. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Who will roll the stone away? That's what's on the two Mary's minds as they get up before sunrise that first Easter morning and slip quietly through the darkness toward that place they saw Joseph of Arimathea lay Jesus in a tomb. And I mean, it's a legitimate concern. The kind of large slab of a stone that would have been used to cover a grave would have been extremely heavy. Perhaps the track carved out for that stone even led slightly downhill toward the opening of the tomb. 
meaning it would have been far easier to push the stone to close the tomb than it would have been to open it. They woke up that morning with a plan, a plan to anoint the dead body of Jesus, to give him a proper burial. But in their haste to carry it out, suddenly they realized they had not thought through every detail. Of course, we've all done it, right? We rush out the door to accomplish whatever it is that's on our mind, and then halfway through the endeavor, we encounter some complication, something we hadn't thought of when we realized I didn't plan for that. My wife and I do this quite frequently as we attempt to deftly arrange our taxi services for our three children and their activities. But you know what usually happens. Usually a solution is found, and often through the help of others. I can run your kid home, says the parents, one of your child's friends, and all of a sudden everything is solved. You're on a vacation lost, and stranger kindly points you in the right direction. Usually whatever kind of stone it is that's in our path, somehow, some way, it gets rolled away. Well, small stones anyway. Maybe not the very large stones of life. Saw a book yesterday advertised. It was an illustrated book by a Christian author entitled, What If Jesus Was Serious? Now, you'll be proud of me. I didn't purchase the book. (laughs) But I was intrigued. Without knowing anything about its contents, I started to wonder, what's this book all about? In my mind's eye, I was thinking the author, Sky Jathani, was trying to get Christians who may or may not want to take God's warnings about sin seriously to actually think about the things he said. To think about what if Jesus actually meant those things he said. What if in the end, Jesus turns out not to be some big teddy bear who'll just wrap his arms around us when we die, but what if he's actually a God who holds people accountable for how we live our lives? What if Jesus was serious? Or stated another way, what if we actually took Jesus' words seriously? Would it change how we live? Would it change what we believe? Well, a quick search on Amazon showed me this was just one book in a series. What if Jesus was serious about prayer was one of the titles. What if Jesus was serious about heaven was another. The point is, if Jesus was serious about prayer, would we pray more? Would we be more bold to ask God for things? If he were serious about heaven, would we be more conscious of living our lives each day, not as residents of this fallen world, but as future citizens of heaven. And then I thought about Easter morning. And I thought about these poor women at the tomb and their worry over this stone. Who will roll it away? And I asked myself, what if Jesus was serious about the resurrection? After all, hadn't he taught his followers on several occasions exactly what would happen, that he'd be put to death, but that after three days he would rise again? What if they'd taken him at his word? Maybe they wouldn't have been worried on this early morning jaunt to the tomb. Maybe they wouldn't have been worried about the stone, no matter how big it was. By the way, I think it's always worth noting on Easter morning that the stone was not rolled away on that first Easter so that Jesus could get out of the tomb, okay? Just a clarification, if he's able to rise from the dead, he's probably able to figure out that part as well. No, the reason the women soon look up and find the stone rolled away is because God is displaying for all the world to see that that tomb is empty, that Jesus is not there, that he has risen. Come, see the place where he lay. The angel bids the women, look, it's empty now. Who will roll the stone away? You know, for all the good that stone can be used for in this world, in Scripture, often it gets employed in imagery of creating difficulty in our lives. For instance, Scripture says, our fallen rebellious hearts are like hearts of stone, stubborn, resistant, unable to change, cold, dead slabs. Saying we have hearts of stone is another way of saying we've got a sinful nature. And our heart's desires are always going to want to tend against the direction of God's word and God's ways. 
We're a people who are wronged and we first think about revenge. We're a people who are robbed and our first thought is retribution. We're a people who get injured and our first thought is retaliation. Our sinful nature always wants to settle the score, have our way, show the other person. Or worse yet, perhaps we're the instigator of the harsh word or the secret betrayal. Who will roll the stone of these hard hearts away? I suppose no one in this world has the strength, and especially not we ourselves. See, only Jesus can do that, and so he does. I will remove your heart of stone, and I'll give you a heart of flesh, cries out our God through the prophet Jeremiah. If these hard hearts of ours have any chance of becoming good soil for the kingdom of God, Jesus is the one who's going to have to remove that hard obstinance we often have in the face of his will. Who will roll the stone away? Well, Jesus is going to have to. I knew a lady once who lived out in New England, uh, and she and her husband were putting an in-ground pool in their backyard, and they were very generous inviting others over to swim in this pool. When my firstborn was very young, we got to spend several afternoons there on a hot, sweltering day, a treat for a young child. And the thing is, in-ground pools in that region of our nation are very rare. The ground is just too full of granite. And she was telling me one day that when they decided to put this pool in, the backhoe took one dig and hit a slab of granite. And the foreman of the crew came to her and said, we might have to blast with dynamite, which quickly gets very, very expensive. It would have broke their budget, and there would have been no pool. She worried about it, but she also prayed about it. She said, Jesus, we want to use this pool not just to bless our family, but to bless others. And in the end, it just ended up being one small slab. And the project went off without a hitch, of course, she was a spiritual woman, and she was convinced Jesus took those stones away. <laughs> Perhaps he did. But what if it hadn't gone that way? What if she'd ended up with a giant hole in her backyard, no money to blast out the rest, and at the end of the day, a big mess and no pool? Doesn't life work like that sometimes? One thing after another. You just get caught up on a credit card bill, and the car breaks down. You spend a nice Christmas with a family, and soon after, one of them ends up ill and in the hospital. You're on track for retirement, and then you lose your job, or the stock market takes a dive. You see, Jesus once compared these worries and cares of our lives to rocky ground. You remember, don't you, the parable he told about the farmer who sowed the seed? He says, sometimes the seed of the gospel falls into rocky soil and it tries to grow, but it can't get deep roots because things keep blocking its path. Jesus says these are the troubles and cares of our lives. When troubles arise, they can stunt our faith from growing and flourishing. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering, what rocks have been unearthed recently in your life? I'm wondering this Easter Sunday, what large stones are in your soil right now? Because I know everyone's got something they're dealing with. Who's going to roll these stones away? Now, you already know the answer to that question, but maybe you're in church on Easter morning today to be reminded of the answer. Maybe you're in church on Easter to be reminded that the little rocks, the big rocks, and everything in between... If these stones are going to get rolled away, Jesus is going to have to do it. The question is whether we'll believe that he can. Jesus says he walks with us in every difficulty and trial. How might our lives look different if we actually believed Jesus and took him serious when he said that? Well, hard hearts of stone and rocky ground of daily living, these are one things, but let's be honest, as these two women approach the tomb this first Easter morning, they are up against something far more far formidable. The big rock they think they are worried about is the stone they expect to find in front of that grave. But the far greater stone they are dealing with is the death of their Lord. 
Because death is a stone that until that day had never been rolled away. And the truth is, death is going to come for us all eventually. For some, it comes at a time that from our perspective is the normal time. I don't know. One psalmist suggests maybe late 70s, early 80s. For some, it comes seemingly far too late, 90-year-olds who I visit in the nursing home and they say, Pastor, every one of my generation has come and gone. Why am I still here? For some, it comes seemingly too soon, a life that's sh cut short by cancer or a car accident. And for some, it comes seemingly far too soon, an infant, a child, a, a teenager just learning how to drive. Of course, from God's perspective, who numbers our days, the paths of our lives are set from the foundation of the world. The author of life determines the span of our own days. But when death, which the Bible clearly calls our enemy, when it finally does come, it's like a giant stone placed over the lives of our fleeting existence. And it is by far the most grievous thing we deal with in this earthly life. Who will roll the stone of death away? You know, I often walk the cemetery behind our church and I've now stood there on several dozens of occasions as we've laid our brothers and sisters in Christ to rest. And maybe you've never thought this, and maybe you have, but when I see a casket locked from the outside, and when I see a cement vault in the ground where the body is lowered, and when I watch six feet of dirt be placed on that grave, it bothers me. Though I know God has it figured out, I think to myself, how are they going to get out? It's unsettling for me to think of myself one day being buried. And as I complete another lap around the cemetery and I look at those rocky slabs atop the graves of our loved ones, and as I think about the resurrection on the last day, I have to remind myself God has the power to get us out, to raise our bodies even from death. See, what if Jesus was serious about the resurrection? I guess it'd have to mean this, that death, while supremely grievous, would yet be nothing to be feared. It's something Jesus has conquered. And one day he will conquer it for everyone sitting here today, and then that day tears will be gone forever. Jesus will blast the stone off the top of our graves and make a giant gaping hole over a place that once was blocked. That's the great Easter promise for all who took Jesus seriously, who had faith and believed in his promises. But just like was true for Jesus, our graves will not be opened on the last day so that we can get out. No, instead, the stones that mark our deaths will be removed precisely in order to show the whole world that we no longer there. May that peace of God, which continues to surpass our understanding, guard your hearts and minds this Easter in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Join with me as we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for our sin and for our salvation came down from heaven and was departed by the 
Please stand. Rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord and sharing in his peace, let us pray to the Lord on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. O risen Savior, set our tongues free to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross and the hope granted to us of life that death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, make us to burn with the fire of your love, that we may love you above all things and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts, that we may live out fully the hope planted within us and the new lives we received in the waters of our baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer mental illness, and those in their last days on earth. Give them grace according to their need, and sustain them in their afflictions to the day when their sufferings will be exchanged for glory in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, you have opened up to us the way to eternal life and the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for all those who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in that same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless throughout our days of pilgrimage. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our resurrected Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul till life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. We pray. We give thanks to you, O Lord, that by eating and drinking your body and blood, you have given us the benefits of your death and resurrection. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit, that our faith in you increase daily, and we hold fast to the hope that on the last day we will be raised to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and grant you his everlasting peace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.